Right, it's Monday morning, nothing's changed. I've got to go shopping for beach. These are nearly eight foot tall. I've got this piece here. And what I'll be looking for when I get down there is straight boards, or as straight as I can find. So I've only got a little joiner. But even, even if I had a big fancy joiner, you still couldn't get a bent board straight. You're playing too much off. You'd end up with like, like a bow, like a, a wedge, wedges on the end. And when I get down there, I've got to sort of guesstimate how much I've pulled out the rack. And the price that I was given when I got down there, originally years ago, was a cubic foot price. They sell it in cubic meter prices, but they'll give you a cubic foot price. And most builders merchants will have a a cash counter. You don't need to have an account with them. So anybody can go in there and buy some. But it's working out how much you need and how much you've bought before you get to the counter. So imagine this is a 12 foot board, 6 inch wide, 1 inch thick. That's 12 1 foot pieces. If you stack them all up, 12 inch, 1 inch, 1 inch, 1 inch, 12 inch high, 6 inch wide, that's half a cubic foot. So each one of these boards would be half a cubic foot. And I know it's about 24, 25 pound a cubic foot plus that. What I want to get, this one is 145. They come slightly wider slightly smaller they come in various widths what I've got to try and work out is 80 mil for me doors and 3 inch for the for the side pieces and I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 pieces at 8 foot. Brakes are fixed. I had to change a hose and a bit of pipe and put new pads in. I took it for a drive. It seems to work. We'll soon find out. So this is my pack. They've only got 10 foots, not eight foots. You can see all these, just too small for me. I'd get 80 mil out, but I'd have quite a lot of waste. So, I need to see what I can get out of what. I'll probably end up going through the pack right down here somewhere. Beyond that, I've got nowhere to put the junk. But like I was saying, each shed, these are 10 foots. I'll average them out at six inch wide, which means that each one of these is a little bit less than half a cubic foot. Could use tulip, but I prefer the finish on beach, it's slightly smoother. But that's the tulip up there and there. I don't know, three sixes or four twos. I need two two summit for the doors, so a lot of waste in that. They look like slightly wider boards, so I'd probably get two out of each, but I think it'd be a lot of waste on that. So back to the beach. Like I say, a lot of these too narrow for what I want. There's about seven cubic foot there, which to my calculation should add up to about 210, 220. We'll see. When I put the stack back, you don't want to be pissing off the people that are adding your wood up. I worked out a bit cheaper. It was 23 pounds summit a cubic foot. So 163 plus the VAT, bought a sheet of MR, £26 plus VAT, it's about 31, 32, total 228, so yeah about 200 quid. 
and if anybody's interested this is the little tally that they give you to take into the office 3.1 meter long boards and the sizes and how many of each in the total Thirteen miles, and the brakes aren't smoking, which I guess is the way they're supposed to be. That's what I ended up buying was mainly boards that are, are long enough for me to get two eighty mil pieces out of. I need one sixty for that, plus a bit of planing. And there's a couple of skinnier ones, this one and I think that one. I'll either be able to get three inch pieces out or I need some for the bottom rails and a spare I don't normally like big boards but I need some bits for the tops and bottoms of the carcasses and some skirting so they're gonna stay there for the moment I'm gonna go sharpen my planer blades right, it's not technically challenging to get these blades out or to change them Hardest bits doing all these bloody nuts up with a little spanner in there. So the blade goes up against there. Let's spin this around. I've unplugged it. See, that's the bar that's locking it in, and then the cutter at the back there. But you've got to tighten all these little nuts up all the way in. And then I use a little magnet just to help lift the blade out. Boring. I have shown you this before, but a couple of bits of wood with my blade slotted in. Different grits of paper. There's different ones on the other side that are going right down to, I don't know, a thousand grit or something. This first one is the most important one. This is like you're honing when you hone your chisel, you know, when you get rid of all the rubbish take it back to smooth and then you just polish it off and then when you're finished just flat flat it off take any burr off that you might put on the back just rub 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 and I'll put a bit of water on these just to help it slide Swap it around occasionally just in case I'm putting more pressure on one side than the other. This paper's starting to run out now. I changed this paper, it's getting a bit tired, but see it's starting to come up. It's quite sharp actually, so. Uh, that's any notch he's got now. Move on to the next grit. That first one was about 40 grit. It's quite worn now though. This one is 80 I think. I'll slowly work my way around, right down to the finest one. 
Right now, turn it back over and I'm onto this. I think it's about 120, 240, I don't know. I've got a very slight burr on the back of here, just like when you sharpen your chisels. Lay it flat on here and just remove that burr. You can feel it go away almost immediately. Right, so I've got this nut just just loosely tightened up in front of this grub screw. The same there. And I used a magnet just to just to help me jiggle the blade around. Because the blade's got a slot in it that the head of this little grub screw sits into. So now using the setting tool, I want to be working I want to be lifting the blade till it's just touching that mark underneath that step there. So set that on there. And if I can get this in, tighten that up and I'll do it evenly so that I'm not tilting the blade. I can't do it with two hands. I need to do it with two hands. Now they're in. I'm just going to use a bit of acetone. To remove some of this resin that's built up on here. I'll do the same to the inside of this, then I'll polish it with a bit of that. Just to help the shavings come out easier. Alright, that's nice and waxed now. I'm doing my joint of blades as well. Got a new sheet of paper. This is 240. I ain't got any glue to stick it down, but I'm just going to hold it. It'll do. through the finer grits now. I'm setting it up with the edge of the table there. I don't use it for rebating but if I'm planing wider boards you want to be cutting right on this edge otherwise it sits up on the slip. It's hard to explain but yeah it flush with the edge of the table. Right, I've got that flush with the end of there. You don't want a wide piece like that. Because you want to be... There's two adjustment screws, one there, one there. So the narrow piece so that you can work on each side. So I've got that flush at that end. And when I turn this... Oops. When that blade contacts that, it'll shift it. That shifted it about a centimetre, ten mil. That one's moved it about the same, which means that that blade is parallel to this. Could use digital stuff and what have you, but looks about right to me. I've already locked this one down. So what I can do is go around to the second blade. This one's got two blades. 
and of course I've unplugged it. See that doesn't move that one that much. And that hardly moved it at all. So these blades need to come up a little bit. And try it again. That was similar to what the other blade did. Same as that. So I'll lock these down and test it again. See, about a centimetre. About a centimetre. Now what I've got is a knob under here and I can raise this bed. And what I want is to raise it so that when this piece of wood moves it only moves just a fraction you want the blades very slightly higher than this outfeed table here If you're getting snipe on the end of your board here as it's passing through, it means that this table is too low. So as it's coming through, it's planing okay, but then it sort of just drops off that last bit and cuts the end of your board. If, you, if your table's too high, you won't be able to plane a piece straight. Take this off. If your table's too high to your blade, higher than your blade, what will happen is your blade will cut, but then it'll hit the table, and in a way, your timber's doing that as it comes off. So, what you'll end up with is a, a piece of wood curved that way. And, like I say, if it's too low as it's coming through, Cutting, 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 okay, but then it just seems to snipe the end of your board there. But I think I've got it just about right. Right, so that's good. Got a long, boring day now, planing wood, lots of wood.